I, I knew Ali's music since I was a, since I was a young boy. Um, my father used to allow me to stay up late to watch Ali on television. <laughs> and uh, in 1984, Ali and I were both on the same concert. And his uh, accompanist uh, didn't come. So I jumped on the piano and I, and I played for Ali. And um, two years later, Ali had a television series in Glasgow and he invited me to be in a band. And the audience liked what we did together. So yeah. because of, of, of public demand, we decided to do one small tour uh, of six concerts. Uh, that was uh, 27 years ago. <laughs> so it's uh, the rest. The rest is history. And the six concerts have become 45 concerts. <laughs> yeah. So we, we just discovered really that that um, our styles um, matched. Yeah, we like the same kind of music. Yeah. We both have the same feeling for it. I think we, we, we've been very lucky because I think um, we are the first generation of, of, of musicians, at least I was the first generation to be able to, to live from music, to be able to work from it. And um, we've both been incredibly lucky people. We haven't had to work <laughs> in our lives. I mean, playing for us is we enjoy the playing, it's the traveling we don't enjoy, but the actual work is something we love. So uh, we've been incredibly lucky people. You know, when, when we began um, to perform with our bands, uh, Ali with Boys of the Lock, I was with Silly Wizard, there was no career no. Uh, in, in, in folk music. No. It was just something people did because they enjoyed it. And there was, a, there was, the audience suddenly started to want more. And I always say that we were like uh, surfers on a wave, you know, and we were on the crest of a very big wave, but there was no, uh, no beach in sight. Nobody knew where we were going to go. We no. were just on the wave, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and, and just moving forward all the time, just and waiting to see what happened. And it, it, it's been very interesting because yeah. it went from, music that we had to export from Scotland because Scottish people weren't interested to music that we can play exclusively in Scotland if we wanted to yeah. because now we, there is a huge audience for Scottish music in Scotland alone. Yeah, and, and we, we and a few friends, we, we made that happen. And that's very important because there were very, very few musicians left in Scotland. And the same thing in Ireland, there were very few musicians there either. So it only took one or two people to start doing it and telling people that this is your music, you should be, you should be happy with it, you should be proud to have such a culture. And uh, they were. And uh, because television was playing rubbish and uh, we, we had to go into the villages and play. Phil and I, we played in all the little villages in Scotland and said, this is your music, here you are. We want to give it back to you. And they all came out, cats, dogs, men, women, children, they all came. And then they began to play, the kids began to play, and now there are hundreds of yeah.
there's been such a big development. In, well, for me, it's 37, 37 years I've been on the road since I was 16. And, I, and uh, I've seen huge change in, in the respect for traditional music yeah. in 37 years. It's massive. It's huge. And, uh, and it's been great. And, and, you know, because of the nature of the job, um, it's 37 years of, of total pleasure um, mixed in with some hard work. Uh, but but also meeting so many amazing musicians that are willing to share their music and I've learned such a lot from the people that I've met yeah. in my life. It's incredible. And, and, and we've traveled all over the world and got to understand other music, American music, French music, Spanish music, whatever. We, we meet people wherever we go and you're always learning a little bit from them and introducing that into your music. So the music is evolving and changing all the time. So yeah, we've we've been very lucky. It was, a, it was a total surprise. Um, no one told me I was getting it. Um, the postman arrived at my house one day and he, and he handed me a, a, a cardboard parcel. And he said, <laughs> this is for you. And I took it into the house, I opened it, and inside was a Grammy. Yeah. It, it was a, a writer's Grammy. Um, the, it was for a, a musician called Paul Winter, who had recorded one of my tunes. So he got the Grammy for his record but all the writers got a Grammy for contributing to the record. So um, 
you know, these things are nice when, when, when at any time someone um, gives you an award uh, to say thank you for the, the, the work you've put in. What we like to do is to, is to play music. We enjoy playing nice melodies, yeah, uh, like melodies. big strong melodies, and, and we, we just enjoy how it comes out on the day. And we get quite close to the audience. We like to talk to the audience and, and communicate with them. And uh, it's you'll get some some nice soft music. You'll get some fast, exciting music. And if you understand my jokes, you'll have a laugh. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's fantastic to be back in Madrid at Clamores. We had a great concert here before, and yeah. uh, this is the first concert we, we we left Scotland this morning. We left our houses at four o'clock this morning. Uh, to get here. We've had uh, two flights through Paris down to Madrid, um, but delighted, really delighted to be here again. It's yeah. a fantastic, Great. fantastic club. Great atmosphere. Hey, Clamores TV, it's Phil Cunningham, Ali Bain. Cheers, all Cheers, the very best, all the best. and uh, many successful many concerts years. in the future. All the many best. More years.